Tonight, Republicans refusing to budge as the U.S. is now one step closer to an economic crisis. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen announcing the U.S. has hit its debt ceiling of $31.4 trillion, a number too large to even contemplate. Yellen urging Congress to reach a deal as soon as possible to raise the debt limit. She warns extraordinary measures are being taken to prevent the country from defaulting. This is now a game of chicken. Armanu Raju is reporting the House Speaker Kevin McCarthy promised not to raise the debt ceiling without concessions uh, in order to win over hardline Republican spending cuts. The White House insists there's absolutely nothing to talk about on that front. And today, neither side's blinking. This should not be up to negotiation. The White House strategy of, oh, we're not going to have any negotiations is insane. Up front now, Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna, who I will note represents Silicon Valley and taught economics at Stanford University. So, Congressman, uh, your Republican colleagues, I just, you just heard one of them there. Um, but, but here's what they're saying today. Congressman Andy Biggs tweeted in part, quote, we cannot raise the debt ceiling. Talking about Democrats, they've made their bed, so they must lie in it. And here's a few more of your Republican colleagues. I will not vote for a debt ceiling increase that does not include cuts to spending. The American people are sick and tired of this endless debt increasing. Saying you're not going to negotiate, I think, is an untenable and unacceptable position. I, for one, will not sign a clean uh, bill raising the debt, the debt limit. So, Congressman, uh, the president, uh, you know, said he would would, would not uh, talk about spending cuts. That's where the White House position is. So are you going to take this to the mat? Are you going to try to call them on their bluff and have a default? Or do you think, all right, maybe some spending cuts? Well, we're not going to default. And it's sad because this is a self-inflicted, manufactured crisis. America should pay the debts that we have incurred. And it's past Congresses that have authorized and appropriated that spending. Much of the debt is because of Republican policies. Of course, Democratic policies, too. But it was Trump's tax cuts, uh, these overseas wars that also caused the debt. There's some of the spending that Mm -hmm. Democrats take presidents undertook. But we should pay that obligation. We can debate future spending, but why are we debating whether we should pay our debts? Right. Well, some of the people now who said they won't vote for this did vote for a lot of that spending. And a lot of that spending, as you point out... um (laughs) <laughs> where spending is, there's plenty of bipartisan uh, support and blame, whatever word you want to use. But even on the Democratic side, Congressman, uh, Senator Joe Manchin says that it's a good idea for Democrats and Republicans to sit down together and to talk about this. He, he said, uh, here's what he would like to see. We have to work together. It's going to take, it's a bipartisan, it's always been bipartisan as far as the debt ceiling. We're not getting rid of anything, and you can't scare the bejesus out of people saying, we're going to get rid of Social Security, we're going to privatize. That's not going to happen, but we should be able to solidify it so the people that have worked and earned it know they're going to get it. And that's what we're talking about. So what do you say to him? Should this be, is, this, is the word bipartisan going to play here? If we want to have bipartisan conversations about how we reduce our future deficit, let's have them. And I uh, disagree with some of the spending cuts that the Republicans want, but that's a legitimate point of debate. But what we can't debate is whether we should be paying the past debts. And the Democrats never do this. I mean, we may have individuals symbolically vote against the debt ceiling, but at the end of the day, when there's a Republican president, the Democrats always give the votes. We never hijack the economy saying, pass our policies or we're going to crash the United States economy. That's not bipartisan. That's not a way of governing. Uh, That's like basically saying if you have an argument with your spouse, threatening divorce every time. I mean, that's not responsible. All right. So, Congressman, I want to ask you one other thing before we go. The, The breaking news on David Crosby's death, the music icon. And I know you're a big fan, too. Um, You know, what was your favorite song and what does this mean to you? I'm a fan. I mean, I probably uh, Mr. Tambourine Man because I'm a Dylan fan as well, and that was their cover song. But I'll tell you what strikes me about his life. Uh, Like anyone, he went through ups and downs, and he was so open and honest about the addictions and the struggles, and he triumphed over it. And it seems towards the end of his life, he was really at peace. And I think that's so relatable. It's so human, and it shows uh, resilience. And I think that's why so many people were drawn to him. Yeah, absolutely. His his words there at the end, being ready and comfortable with his choices. Uh, So powerful. Thank you so much, Congressman. Thank you. Thank you. And next, Republican Congressman George Santos responding tonight to the New Jersey veteran who claims Santos stole $3,000 that had been raised for his dying dog's surgery. 
What does former Congressman Adam Kinzinger, who's a member of the military, think? He's next. And more on our breaking news of the legendary singer and songwriter David Crosby. What Crosby was saying about his plans for the future that he had left just a few weeks ago. Historically, from...